not only is Willie Deagle a Food Network star, but he's also the founder and CEO of Uncle Jack's Steakhouse and Uncle Jack's Meat House. Today, he's here to talk about all things food and tell us more about the new Uncle Jack's Meat House location in Astoria. Everyone, put your hands together for Willie Deagle. <laughs> You're eating all the cookies Willie. already? Mm -hmm. We love it. Hi, how are you? Hi, What's up, Brit? how are you doing? So, Willie, uh, um, we thing. have been snacking on these wonderful goodies uh, for the show, but can you tell us what we have on the table? Okay, to start off, this is what you call the Fred Flintstone. You see it <laughs> a lot. It's a tomahawk rib chop. I originated it about 20 years ago, and I called it a Fred Flintstone because I grew up every morning watching the Flintstones, mm -hmm. and they would deliver the meat, and the car would flip over at the takeout. <laughs> so it's a huge exposure. We created these plates with magnets. That's a New York strip. Prime, dry age, wet age, Favorite. 16 ounce. So Over here we got the lobster tacos. We got our, you know, applewood smoked bacon that we do with a little chipotle mayo, oven roasted slow, house made peanut butter, a bunch of brunch items, big burger, mm. smoker, cookies, you ate them. That's a cookie staircase, <laughs> yeah. like a staircase to heaven. It's a staircase of cookies, Jeez. some we got brunch some items. Them. Yes. Uh, the, the chicken and waffles, oh. yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, and all the maple syrup comes from Vermont. We work yeah. with a little local farm. He ships it to us, and we serve it with its own little maple syrup. Nice thing, so you do it yourself. You know, never enough syrup, that's what I say, never right? Never enough syrup. So Uncle Jack's has been so successful that you now open this other location that's a mm. meat yeah. house. Yeah, so what so the meat the house concept is, it's more like a, a, a great American bar and grill. So it's like an old world setting, like in the early 1900s of a meat Ooh. packing industry but with a little bit of a classy restaurant. In a story, we got a hidden speakeasy in Dip Mars. You have to come down to these bathrooms. I call it the lavatories. It's got a big trough sink. You wash your hands, a 55-inch selfie TV. Yes. So you take your selfies, you put it on Facebook, Twitter. I also send out pictures for you, complimentary. You take home, give it oh. to your friends for parties, events. Then there's this big steel vault door, and you got to have the password every day to get in to the bootlegger jack speakeasy, a DJ, very loungy. All about whiskey, bourbons, craft dope. cocktails. Oh my god! I, I, love. I, want, I want to go to there. And like, right don't now. you love his energy? I mean, yeah. you're, it's so contagious. How did you get involved with Uncle Jack? You know, I'm a baby of four boys. Grew mm -hmm. up in Flushing, Queens, so I'm a Queens boy. I call it the White Ghetto. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we had to have newspaper routes. I had to shovel snow. We had to pay for Catholic school. And my father worked two jobs. My mother worked, so they taught us hard work and to set goals and dreams. And out of all my brothers, I was like the youngest entrepreneur. Mm. My brothers wanted to go to college. They taught me what to do, what not to do. And my father always said, this one doesn't need college. I was building cars, buying, selling things. I did anything, anything to do to make a buck. Then I got on a, I was on a blind date, and my friend asked me to work the door in his bar in Queens, and I bounced. And I packed the place with so many people I knew, so the owner's like, why don't you bartend? And then that's what happened. <laughs> Forget about it. Because yeah. the restaurant industry is such an incredibly hard industry to be a part of. You really have to give your heart and your soul to make it successful, and you've done that. Yes. What other, like, what inspires you now? Like, what, what made you want to do the Meat House of Speakeasy? What keeps you going? Well, challenging yourself. Like, as an entrepreneur, you know, I grew up and I'm a different type of person. When everybody says go, I say no. Right. When everybody says no, I say go. So I tend to go against the grain. And being an entrepreneur, you always want to get outside your comfort zone. I want to face fears. I want to fail. I like right. failing because I'm learning as I'm going. My brothers went to college, right? You take a test. Mm -hmm. You think everybody's going to judge you because if you get 100. In real life, no one knows what your scores are, mm -hmm. right? Everybody sees what I get done. They say, you're lucky. Right. I'm not lucky. I just never quit. Right. And I keep aspiring others. People, I build teams, winners. Anyone going to build a restaurant. But building and working with people mm -hmm. and changing their life and making them happy and be a part of something and staying connected to the customer and giving you the best experience when you come there. That's what I, that's what I live for. And that's such a key part of being, having a successful restaurant is the atmosphere, is the team you build internally, but the, the, the family you build with your customers. What, what kind of atmosphere do, could people expect when they visit the Meat House? The Meat House, you're going to have a place that's it's a work of art. Right. So many talented people were involved working with me to bring this vision to life. So the details details are incredible. You're going to take your camera, you're going to selfie everything. Look at all the steel plates. Look at how theatrical yeah. it is. I created 
all of that with a great steel artist. Mm -hmm. So then the people itself, we're going to be outgoing. We're very friendly. The food's going to be executed. The chef's going to come out. We have a charcuterie station in the middle of the dining room. I call it my chef's stage. Mm -hmm. We have 100-day steaks. He's, he's cutting them, chopping them live in front of you, bringing it to your table, showing you exactly what you're going to get. So there's no jokes here. This right. is what we do. We don't complicate food. We're not Frenchy. Right. We make everything mm -hmm. fresh from scratch that's high quality. I'm like, bada bing, let's go. It's just I'm going to get some steak. <laughs> meat on I love meat. it. <laughs> you know, but that's, you know, yeah. that's how it is. Yeah, I that's love it. That's the queens in me. Everybody I, I, I love it. It's like reminding of my grandmother. Yeah, I love it. And you're known as the, the steak doctor. Doctor, yes. So tell me, what is that? And how did you get from flushing to get to be the steak doctor? Growing up <laughs> in my family, we ate meat and potatoes every night, German <laughs> Irish. So we became <laughs> experts on meat and and like me and my brothers fought over the veal cutlets, the chicken, the oh. roast pork, the pot roast. So four boys, my father, my mother, there was nothing left for my mother. <laughs> so months, you always. become a meat expert, yeah. you know, and mashed potatoes. So being a steak doctor and having a steakhouse and cooking and traveling for years, 30 years, I developed this seasoning and it's a secret seasoning of all different mixtures of salts and different peppers from all over the world. Mm. And you rub that shit on everything and it makes it taste better. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's fun. I love that. That. And you, you were on a show, a Food Network show called Restaurant Steakout. Yes, Out. yes. So how has it been being a Food Network star? Obviously, you're made for TV, but how yeah. has it affected your life? You know, uh, you meet a lot of people. You inspire a lot of people. The show's aired all over the world now. So a lot of what I did was to help people in the business. A lot of people want to go into the restaurant business and because they want to cook, mm -hmm. they want fame, they want popularity, but they just don't understand how hard it yes. is to run. It's war, you gotta be committed, you gotta run your show business, lunch is a show, dinner is a show. So it takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of dedication, mm -hmm. discipline, accountability, motivation, and mentoring. Mm -hmm. So all of those things you have to develop. So that's why I did the show. So a lot of people watched those shows and episodes and they learned a lot of that and all my tricks I gave out. So it's great. And as long as I'm inspiring, helping people, and they see how hard it is. So when they're coming in and getting their family and friends investors, hopefully they make a go of it and make a winning team. Yeah. yeah. And as the steak doctor, what qualities make a perfect steak? Mm. OK. Mm. So when you're looking for a steak, it depends on what cut you want. Meat's very expensive today. So prime meat, everyone wants to know what prime. Prime is the marbling and the fat content within the meat. Then there's American Wagyu. That's upper level prime. Then there's Japanese Wagyu, which has the sickest amount of fat. Right. More fat than meat. We sell it in all the restaurants. So you want to have marbling sideways in your steaks. Never long ways, because that's a vein. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more marbling, not too much fat around the outside. Mm -hmm. I actually put you to trim it down to like an eighth of an inch. So it wraps it in fat. You get some of that. Caramelize your fat. When you're cooking the steak, always bring it out to room temperature for like a half an hour. Have your seasoning ready. Have whatever fire, oven, pan, grill, preheated, ready to go. Yeah. And what are some common mistakes that people make when they're cooking their steaks? Oh, they overcook. Yeah. They don't season it. They're worried about putting salt and pepper, different things like that. The steak is too thin. Thin steaks will cook up quick and dry out. Mm -hmm. So little things like that are little tips. That's why we do thick cuts. We have an 1800 degrees infrared broiler. So it chars each steak in five minutes. It brings the fat, the salts and peppers, it has it caramelize and lock in the juices. Then you bake it and rest it to temp. Yeah. Wow. Thank Thank you for, for sharing that. And it's so fun listening to your, your passion about food. What are some uh, plans you might have for you know expanding Uncle Jack's or anything like that in the future? So right now in Georgia, I opened the location. I went down to Georgia and was doing business. Mm -hmm. And I was doing different things. And I opened up my meat house in Georgia in Duluth in a suburb. It's a huge hit. Place is packed. It's pumping. Now we're putting one 25 minutes away in Peachtree mm -hmm. Corners, another area in Georgia. So I, I love Georgia. We're growing there. New York right now, the restaurant industry is in massive, you know, transition right. stage. All the labor, all the increases, everything. But we're adapting. People are adapting. We'll never quit. We want to serve the guests, take care of the guests. So uh, we're going to grow to different states and take the brands wherever we can. So before we get out of here, I have to know, what is your most popular brunch item? My most popular brunch item probably is the French toast. It's a classic French oh, bread that? pudding, caramelized banana. Oh. Then people love the little bit homemade. That's a, that's a homemade regatta jar with all imported honey, maple syrup, roasted walnuts. You got your multigrain brands. So, you know, different things. Everybody likes different things. The menu at Uncle Jack's Meat House is about an experience. You can come back there four or five times and have mm. different experiences. 
Wow. So if that's what's really cool, and I believe that's today's eater. Mm -hmm. The younger people, you're more in tune, you're seeing things, you're educated way more. Years ago, you wanted a recipe, like my son's like making banana bread, he's like, Dad, you had to go to the library to get this. <laughs> I got it in two seconds, let's make this. And it's yeah. so true. You want to see what I'm doing? You go to my Instagram page. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah. So I love years ago, you had to visit the restaurant, you had to pay for it, you had to see what's their, what's their expertise. Let me right. go see, you know? Well, I love it. Now, guys, we have to go for it. We have time. to yeah, go. Good. I'm like, yeah. I'm dying. Not yeah, just we'll one, though, four or five times. Yeah. Let's do go. a whole type of you know, build it brunch party in the speakeasy. He said it. We're going to do it. We love it. You hear that? All right. We're going to do it. We're doing it. Thank you for joining us. Yes. You're all going to be there.